Hey, vinyl friends and vinyl community, it's Brian from Brian's Vinyl Records, and today I am back with another Artist Spotlight. I want to thank everybody who's watched the Artist Spotlight series so far, and I hope you've enjoyed them. This episode will be about the Beatles. So stick around and I'll show you which Beatles albums I have on vinyl and uh, talk a little bit about them. Alright, welcome back. So, today I am going to show you my collection of Beatles LPs. And I'm really excited about this because growing up, we listened to a lot of the Beatles in my household. The first cassette tape I ever bought was a 20 Greatest Hits Beatles cassette tape that I see is available on vinyl and I don't have. It's one I'm looking for though. It's a very good compilation, and so I'm really excited about that. But um, I do have a pile of Beatles albums here. I don't have all of them. Obviously, if you know anything about collecting Beatles albums, you know they can get pretty expensive to get. So I just kind of been filling things in. I've got a lot of albums I picked up at 99 cent sales. I've got a lot of them that I bought reissues on. And so let's get into it. Uh, the first one is a 99 cent sale pickup at my local store, and this is... Meet the Beatles, which I believe was the first album that they put out, and I think that um, it was called With the Beatles um, here, but this is the original Meet the Beatles, uh, 1963, I believe, on this one. I can't recall exactly, but this is a stereo version, so not a mono press, a stereo version of the Meet the Beatles album, real fun album. I want to hold your hand, saw her standing there. Um, I want to be your man all my loving just a just a fantastic album and also you know I want to hold your hand and it was one of those songs that they never put out on the US releases later which I thought was kind of weird so but here you go the meet the Beatles and we'll follow that up with an album that I grew up with and love this is the Beatles for sale so this is a repress uh, I think from 2012 when they did the remasters Cool little gatefold there and um, this one was played a lot in my house uh, we had the CD for this one uh, growing up and played a lot of this album uh, just a really fantastic album eight days a week is a favorite no reply I'm a loser babies in black gosh just a, a really great album so the Beatles for sale repress next is the soundtrack to a hard day's night this is a 99 cent uh, pick up as well a stereo version of the album so not the uh, coveted mono version but a stereo version uh, real cool I like the uh, the really cool um, red cover because when I grew up it was that white with blue all over they had uh, uh, a different looking color and sometimes yellow was on there too but I never saw it with this red so getting the vinyl with all this red on it was really kind of cool so here's the Beatles a hard days night soundtrack this one is the Beatles 65, another 99 cent pickup at, at my local store. And uh, the cover is really beat up on this one, which is really kind of uh, sad, but um, we'll, we'll go with it. It's kind of cool. This is stereo as well, copy of Beatles 65. This is a favorite in my household growing up and another one that needs to uh, probably get it replaced. Um, this one is, in real rough shape the cover is just really beat to heck and the vinyl itself is not in the best of shape so this is one that's on the chopping block to get a replacement copy of uh, just gotta find it what's really sad is that this one is a mono press so uh, it's too bad that the vinyl is as scratched up as it is because uh, the mono is the one you want to have it on um, most of these 99 cent ones believe it or not that I've shown you um, are actually in really good shape for a 99 cent record and most of it's just cover damage so this one had uh, damage to everything but I couldn't pass it up it's a Beatles album it's still listenable uh, just a little bit of noise 
This next one I have here, this one is Yesterday's and Today, and this is my dad's copy of this album. It is not a butcher copy. Um, it's a stereo version of the album, and it's seen a lot better days. Uh, the album is just beat up, and that's because of a lot of storing and water damage and moisture damage and everything else. This thing's been through a lot, but the vinyl sounds pretty good for everything it's gone through. Again, one that'll probably eventually have to be replaced, uh, but it's my dad's copy, so I will hold on to this for um, forever. The Beatles 6, another one of those uh, albums that I got on the 99 cent sale. And aside from Ms. Jill giving us her autograph here up top and this little piece here that got cut, which is a, a perfect cut here, so I'm not sure if that happened before. This one's in really good shape. Um, for 99 cents, you can't go wrong with it. I was real happy with everything. The vinyl looks pretty good. There's some smudges on there and stuff, but overall, it sounds really good for 99 cents. Very happy with that. This one I picked up recently. This is a stereo reissue from 2012 of Revolver, which is one of my favorite Beatles albums. Um, I wanted to get the mono because there's a mono reissue from 2012 as well, but none of the local stores I went to had it in mono. Uh, I could have ordered it off of Amazon, but I didn't want to do that. So I just picked this up at one of my local shops uh, in the stereo version and um, it sounds great. So I'm not going to complain too much, but this is Revolver, really good album. Uh, the next two I want to talk about in more detail because they are the recent remasters, mixes, and reissues from Giles Martin, George Martin's son. And I just want to say what an absolutely phenomenal job he did on his two albums that he's put out so far. This one, Sgt. Pepper's sounds awesome this one came out I think in 2017 if I'm not mistaken and it's just a really great package really cool gatefold and the album sounds awesome he breathes so much new life into this record that um, I don't think I would ever want to listen to the original version of it again it sounds so good what he did with it so really cool and of course that means the second one is the white album so he redid this one last year uh, 2018 put this one came out as a re reissue and uh, again George uh, Giles Martin breathed so much new life into these songs he took these albums from the 60s and brought them in today to today and just really great this one comes with all the innards uh, the, the photographs of the Beatles the poster everything is in here and just sounds absolutely amazing so props to Giles Martin I really hope that he will also do this one this is my favorite Beatles album of all uh, growing up my dad had this album on vinyl and we would listen to it all the time um, and it just it became my favorite one and when he uh, divvied up his albums between myself and my sister, she ended up with this one, and I was really kind of sad about that. But I hunted and hunted and hunted, and I couldn't find this anywhere in any of my local shops. And when I found it online, it was too expensive. So one day I called my local shop and said, hey, do you have a copy of The Beatles Let It Be? And he said, oh yeah, I have a copy of that. So I went down there, he went and got the copy out of the vault for me, and here it is. I'm super excited, this sounds great. It's my favorite one. I will likely get a, a repress if um, Giles Martin does it again because I just can't not, it sounds so good. But uh, I'm so happy to have this one, this is my favorite. Next we got Abbey Road. This is I think a 80s press um, that I have here and it, it's pretty beat up and not in great shape and so what I ended up doing um, there's a lot of scuffs and scratches on it what I ended up doing is uh, Target which sells vinyl had this 2012 remaster um, for sale and it was like 16 bucks so I just grabbed that and bought that so I have two copies one with uh, 
uh, an 80s press and one with a 2012 press and this one sounds absolutely fantastic so very excited to have that this one is hey jude which i think is an absolutely awesome album um i have to research a little more about the story behind this album because i think it was put out after the band had actually officially broken up and they just had some other tracks that they decided to put on this album but it's really good it's a compilation of some really great songs like hey jude a really cool version of revolution that's different from the white album which i really like it's got um ballad of john and yoko on here uh don't let me down is on here uh, paperback writer which never appeared on one of the albums which blows my mind is on here so just a really cool compilation that they put out of kind of tracks that weren't on albums that people knew so very good of course then we have the two best of lps i got these for 99 cents a piece um, and the only thing wrong with them is the covers are beat up beyond belief um, they're really bad shape covers but the albums inside look great and they sound great so i thought this was a huge get when i saw it there i grabbed it right away and so awesome to have these two and last but certainly not least I've shown this one before. This is my brother's old album. He bought this with his own money way back when, and it sounds like utter crap. Uh, it's a concert uh, from Hamburg, Germany. Um, not the best recording quality at all. And um, But I keep it for sentimental reasons, and it's kind of a cool little piece of history to have this. I think it was pressed in the Netherlands, yeah, Holland. So, you know, kind of fun. Really neat, and of course, it's got some sentimental value. So, there you go. That is my Beatles collection. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I am always looking for more. I still need to get help. I still need to get Magical Mystery Tour on vinyl. So, there's a lot out there that I still need to get, and I'm always looking for the 20 Greatest Hits package that they put out. I had that cassette growing up. It's the first thing I ever bought with my own money. And uh, I would love to have that on vinyl. And I've seen it posted in other vinyl community threads. So I know it's out there. I know it exists. I just got to find it one of these days. And I don't think it's that expensive either when it is found. So definitely going to add that to my Beatles collection. And then, you know, I'll probably replace a bunch of those 99 centers at some point with some remasters that have been put out. The 2012 remaster series that they've done, all of the ones that I've heard sound really good. So I'm happy about uh, happy to pick up those as replacements when I find them. Uh, but I'm really hoping that Giles Martin will go through and do some more of the catalog because what he done with the uh, Sgt. Peppers and the White Album is beyond awesome. So I'd love to hear those again. So there you go. That is my Beatles collection. I obviously have a ton of CDs from the Beatles as well, the anthologies. I have the Capitol Records Volume 1 on CD and things like that. But... Um, the vinyl that I have are awesome. I'm looking, like I said, for Magical Mystery Tour help. And a one that I really would like to have is Let It Be Naked. I think that would be a fun one to have on vinyl that is out there. But it's really expensive, so I haven't purchased that one yet. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this version of the Artist Spotlight. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Leave us a comment. And, of course, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button below. And So thank you again. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, keep spinning, Vinyl Friends.